Brian Sebastian. You're watching Movie Review Some More. We've got an interview coming up with Johnny Buss. I think you'll enjoy it a lot. So what was your dad, what did your dad have with Jays? What was that all about? <laughs> and you know, and, and how do you see your father, the way your father carried the team and built the Lakers, what do you see as your, your legacy? Because you built a good team too, talk about that. Well, yeah, uh, for 10 years I, uh, I was the uh, president of the Los Angeles Sparks women's basketball team. Uh, we sold those about uh, four or five years ago. But, uh, you know, we won two, two championships. And again, it was, it was that philosophy. I just followed, you know, what we were supposed to do. And uh, we won. We should have won, you know, two others. Um, but we lost in the finals, you know. We just, we just lost it. So, uh, but I was happy with what, uh, what we were able to accomplish. It was, uh, it was proof that, uh, my dad's philosophy worked beyond just the Lakers, it would work in other sports too, so, uh, uh, other businesses. Uh, he was obviously a very successful real estate uh, person, and uh, uh, I, I think he brought a lot of that to sports. Um, I think that's what has cha helped change the NBA to what it is today. Uh, you know, he basically bought the Lakers for you know, what seemed to be a lot of money then, but it, but knowing what it was going to be worth, um, you know, this guy had the insight to, to understand, but it was really from real estate background that he understood what something was worth uh, and what it would be worth, uh, you know, 10 years later. So and now it's 35 years later and it's uh, worth quite a lot. <laughs> you know, Talk about the Jays. I was always curious about that. Why so many Jays? Well, um, my father's name is Jerry. My mother is Joanne. Uh, my father's mother is Jesse. And <laughs> so I think they just, uh, uh, I was actually named after a USC football player, John Arnett, but um, he spelled his J-O-N, but um, my dad enjoyed the, the name Johnny. Uh, J O H N N Y. So, um, uh, so once I, I I got a J, I think they felt compelled and <laughs> and obligated to name each one of them, so that nobody said, "Well, everybody else is named J. Why am I not?" <laughs> so, the next one was Jimmy, Jeannie, Janie, Joey, Jesse. <laughs> That's funny. It's amazing. My sons are C and C, so <laughs> uh, we, we stopped that. Uh, so J to C. Yeah, we went to C and C. How tough was it when, um, when your dad passed away and you were up there? Because I, I, I looked at it a couple weeks ago, I'm like, wow, that was heartfelt. And I can only imagine, was that, how tough was that for you? Or were you, because I, I, the one thing I liked about what you did, you talked about how proud you were as a son to have had your dad that for that many years. I thought that was great. Thank you. Thank you. It, it's, uh, I mean, uh, uh, speaking about it was not tough. Getting up in front of people was not tough. I mean, that, that was not tough at all. Uh, the tough part was that I lost my father. And that was tough, and it still is. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I guess it's a grieving process, but uh, but when you've spent so many years with somebody who was so versatile in his life, uh, I mean, we seriously were going to Disneyland, uh, you know, three years, up to three years before he passed away. Wow. Um, you know, we go to Hawaii. He was, you know, he was just a, a fun guy to be around all the time. Um, even though, you know, all of us kind of went our own separate ways. We'd always do something together with our father. And uh, it was usually something fun, staying overnight at Disneyland Hotel or whatever. Um, you know, he was a kid at heart. Um, and uh, that's what I miss. But it's incredible that, uh, and what he told me, he said, uh, you know, when I'm gone, uh, you'll see that uh, you'll be doing the same thing with your children. 
and I'm so happy that you've decided to have two, you know, wonderful children. He got to me, and uh, that's a big thing. Yeah, he met both my children, yeah. um, and uh, he just said, you know, you'll you'll start living it like just as you grew up. You know, you you have that same kid at heart. Uh, try to keep that. Uh, do things with your children, uh, and uh, uh, you know maybe because you're in a better situation than I was, uh, meaning that he really had to work extremely hard to get to the point that he did uh, with the Lakers and the uh, the business. Uh, you know we're just basically now just following up on that. Uh, I don't have to work as hard, you know. Um, uh, I'm pretty much semi-retired. Uh, I don't do very much at all anymore uh, with the Lakers. Uh, you know, just keeping an eye on things. And, uh, but uh, uh, and the Sparks seem to be in good hands too. Yeah. Well, you know, they're they're still there. They're still there. That's something to be said about women's basketball. That uh, something lasts 15 years in sports. Uh, you know, you can't say that about world football. You can't say that about a lot of other things that uh, have come and gone. But uh, uh, this is this is pretty good. Women's basketball uh, it's it's a different sport. You know, it really is. It's a it's it's a different atmosphere. It's a different uh, uh, understanding of the game. But uh, these women are just as proud and just as tough athletes as anybody else. Talk about music. How important is music for you and why? Well, um, music. <laughs> music was important um, because I was also very impressed with Elvis Presley as I was growing up. Um, you know, that's who I wanted to be like. Uh, you know, in the late 50s, early 60s, it was all Elvis, you know, Elvis movies, Elvis everything. And it kind of still is uh, in a lot of circles, but... Uh, what did you like about Elvis? I don't know. I, I think I just like the music. I like the rockabilly sound. Um, uh, I loved his movies because they were quirky and funny. I, you know, all those beach movies at that time in the early 60s, uh, Beach Blanket, Bingo, you know, I'm a, I was also starstruck by Annette Funicello and uh, you know, just all of those people that uh, did those kind of quirky movies back then. But uh, as, I, as I did that, I just grew up and uh, I ended up uh, forming my own country western band uh, uh, and experiencing what it was like to sing in front of people and it was wonderful. It's great. And so music is a great part of my life. And what do you play? Uh, I played guitar at that time, yeah. And you graduated to what? Well, no, I actually played piano, <laughs> but um, <clears throat> uh, I wanted, you know, uh, for, for our type of music, it was just better that I play guitar. So I had to basically crash course guitar. <laughs> uh, and, uh, uh, you know, it took me a few years to get comfortable with it, but... Uh, uh, you know, then I did that, and I uh, was the uh, lead singer and wrote our music. Uh, and we played at the Palomino in Hollywood, and we played in, uh, I don't know, someplace in Pasadena. Uh, and it was just a lot of, a lot of fun. Uh, what a great experience that was, too. Talk about racing. What did this come about? Racing uh, was also a passion. It was, uh, you know, truthfully, it was a way of us uh, getting out of the pressures of high school at that time. Uh, just some friends got together and we, you know, we all started racing motorcycles. My uncle uh, taught me how to ride a motorcycle when I was at a young age and because uh, uh, he was a racer, ex-racer. And so when it came down to, uh, come on, let's race motocross, let's do it, you know, uh, we would do it. and. Wednesday nights uh, were uh, a motocross race at a, a park called Ascot uh, Raceway in downtown LA. And uh, no longer there, but uh, it was Wednesday nights and that was great. So what we'd end up doing is uh, uh, 
<laughs> and that's not a good thing. We would ditch the school on Wednesday so that we could go out and practice before the race. And uh, then on Thursday, we, you know, we'd be a little sore and stuff like that. But uh, uh, so we might go to school, we might not. Uh, I ultimately <laughs> got in, in a lot of trouble in high school for ditching uh, school uh, to, to race motorcycles. But, uh, you know, as we did that and then as we graduated into uh, uh, college, of course, we just really didn't have time to race. And uh, uh, so we... Uh, so I ended up at that. Uh, I think some of my friends still continued, but uh, uh, then years later, I decided uh, to, that I wanted to start racing formula cars. So I went through the courses, the uh, you know, hey, come and learn to drive, you know, kind of thing. And uh, uh, it was actually quite exciting. So then, uh, you know, I just kept at it, uh, kept graduating better cars, and um, you know, had Paul Newman in our our pits and we got to talk to him, uh, got to watch him race, got to watch him crash, <laughs> actually, uh, at Riverside Ray Raceway. Wow. Um, and, uh, you know, it was just, a, it was a fun period of time, but uh, three years later, my dad just finally said, hey, look, uh, uh, I'm really not liking this. It makes me nervous. I don't, uh, uh, can't you do something else? And uh, I said, sure what do you want me to do? And he said, run a women's basketball team. And so that's really what stopped my ah. racing was uh, women's basketball. Uh, and I wouldn't have had time to race anyway because that was a challenging 24-hour, seven-day-a-week job. Uh, it never stopped. And the fitness that goes along with that too, very, very important. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it was just, just everything. Uh, just everything. You just... Uh, you know, because it was a it was a new happening by the NBA. They created this. Uh, it was an opportunity for me to to get a really fantastic job, and uh, so I I quit racing. 